Well, just draw a big nasty red L on my forehead, because this loser made quite possibly the simplest, dumbest mistake of his so-called YouTube career. So one thing I've been trying to do for a few years now is to get my hands on a Pioneer LaserDisc service remote. Uh, read the ones that the service technicians used to use. And the reason I wanted one was so that I could play discs, and hopefully I'm getting this part right, I make no guarantees, but uh, discs that don't play by the standard two sets of simultaneous codes that laser discs run on. Uh, most non-commercial industrial titles, especially the early ones, only run on one set of codes. So for a few years now, I've had a running Fleabay search for one of those original service remotes, and I still have it going on now, even though I don't need it anymore. But I have yet to see one sell for under $100. But in late 2018, I caught wind of this reproduction service remote. It was $15, and I figured, well, you know, I'll, I'll give it a chance. And long story short, I could never seem to make it work. The best result I got caused the hold and the AV sync on both my LaserDisc players to go completely crazy, and everything would look like old analog scrambled cable TV. But uh, unwittingly, I got myself 99% of the way to success. My tiny little failing was that I was only hitting the play button, either on my regular remote or on the machine, once. I was supposed to hit it twice. Talk about the simplest screw-up ever. So with that, uh, here's another thing I screwed up. I have done two DiscoVision Dead Sides minisodes to date, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, please go and watch those, because this won't make sense otherwise. But I mentioned in both of those episodes that one of the first DiscoVision discs I ever owned, specifically this guy, uh, some other AV geek beat me to the punch in trying to uncover the dead side. As far as I can tell, that person screwed up the disc. And I say that because there was some clouding going on that suggested that some alcohol or other potentially erosion-causing substance got between the two layers of the laser disc and contaminated it. But uh, once I figured out my little goof with the remote here, I figured, well, you know what, just for a lark, I'm going to throw this in one more time, see what happens, and sure enough... I was finally able to access the dead side. And it's an industrial film for the then-new Chevrolet Citation, which I can't seem to find on YouTube or anywhere else, so barring any content ID blocks, I guess I'll be posting that to Archive Annex. And uh, then in the second Dead Sides minisode I did, I had another disc that wouldn't read, specifically the third slash final disc of this movie. And uh, the disc proper had some General Motors looking etching in the outer band. And it is indeed another General Motors industrial film this time for medium-duty commercial trucks. And then, of course, I can't seem to go an entire video without some kind of bummer, so I'll unload that on you here. I own two dedicated industrial laser discs. This is obviously one of them. And they've always locked up on me, and they run right past the chapter stops, automatic chapter stops and all. <sighs> It's no better in test mode. But the unintentional YouTube poops that come out of those discs seem to fare pretty well with my viewership, so I guess I'll include a bit of that again. I mean, they never play the same way twice, so it's truly ephemeral art. But anyway, let's take a cut here. I'll give a quick demo, and then I'll leave you with some direct feed footage of the pertinent data displays, 
and of course some proper footage. I've noticed that this remote is pretty much useless for the regular functions that you would expect, like power, play, stop, fast forward, rewind, etc. But anyway, to get it into test mode here, and this does work on both of my machines at least, uh, it's not the most intuitive thing in the world, but we're going to hit two buttons on the service remote here. So we're going to hit this bottom left one right at the tip of my fingernail, and uh, I call it the S button, E-S-S, -S. and then we're going to hit the test button, again, right at the tip of my fingernail. So what that's going to do is it's going to make the machine go all goofy and stuff. Uh, the front display is going to have some gobbledygook on screen. The screen's going to have some junk on it. But uh, before I do that, we're going to have to turn this thing on, so let's do that. And let's hit those magic buttons. So, there we go. Now, from here you can load up the disc as you normally would, so let's do that. And uh, we'll hit play, and you can do this on your regular remote or on the machine. And we're going to have to hit it more than once. Uh, I found that it works best when you just keep hitting the play button, because it's going to be just a big squiggly mess at first. But you just keep hitting the play button until it becomes clear. And you may have to rewind a bit to catch that first little bit of the program that you inevitably miss and all that. But let's just uh, give this a shot here. Okay, we got squiggles, and we'll just keep hitting play till it clears up. There we go. And now we can learn all about the Chevrolet Citation. Or not, because that would be a pretty long and pretty boring watch for this context. So uh, when you're done, or when the program's done, you can hit the stop button either on the remote or on the machine, and I should note, you sh you have to be a little careful with rewinding and fast forward because you can run the laser right off of the disc and it gets all confused and you have to uh, turn it all off and start over. But uh, uh, we're not going to worry about that right now. So let's stop this. Wait for the disc to come to a complete stop. Uh, the braking mechanism, at least on this model, this uh, 304, does not engage when it's in test mode. So you have to let it come to a natural stop, and it is stopped now, so let's take the disc out. Close it back up. And then we'll uh, dig out the service remote again. We'll hit the same two buttons, but this time in reverse order. So it's going to be test and then ESS. But everything will go black for a second, but you'll see it come back to its normal, proper state. So let's do that. And there we go. And of course, you can shut off the machine. But it's just as simple as that. Uh, simple by AV Geek standards, anyway. But otherwise, that is it for me on the vocal front for today. I'll leave you with some direct feed footage of pertinent stuff, and we'll call it a day. I'll talk to you again soon. Now let's take 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 take
station. Let's say that let's say Citation, a brand new way to say and sell Chevrolet. If you set out to satisfy the wants and needs of today's car buying public, it's likely you'd design a vehicle with the operating economy of a subcompact. Here are some typical reactions from consumers who test drove Chevy Citation in December. I thought the uh, acceleration was excellent. Uh, the braking was real good. And uh, I was impressed with the overall handling. It handles really well. And I was, it was surprising. I didn't expect it to handle as well as it did. Functional cargo capacity. Excellent economy. Good performance. Impressive ride and handling. Appeal to virtually all prospects. On four-cylinder equipped vehicles with air conditioning, a built-in cutout switch turns off the cooling system under high demand conditions thus reducing drag on the engine and assuring steady, consistent performance. This is the first Chevrolet of the 80s, the 1980 Chevy Citation. In four distinctive body styles, versatile two-door hatchback, sporty four-door hatchback, roomy sport coupe, and the exciting X11. Citation's comfortable standard bench seats have ample room for five full-sized adults with impressive headroom, shoulder room, and leg room for both front and rear seat passengers. This could be the car you had in mind. For 1980, Chevy has the medium-duty trucks that buyers are looking for, with the right features and power teams to get the job done, along with a wide variety of accessories to help tailor the vehicle to the buyer's needs. Right now, I'd like to share with you an overview of the medium-duty market and how we at Chevrolet are prepared to provide Chevrolet customers with the right truck for the job the increased concern for economy is arousing greater interest in the diesel engine. In 1978, less than 10% of the industry's medium duties were diesel powered. For 1979, that percentage should be over 23%. Experts project the total to soar to 50% by 1985. Chevy's Series 40 forward control chassis is a highly versatile medium duty that accommodates a wide variety of bodies for curbside delivery applications. Also new for 1980, Caterpillar's 3208 mid-range diesel. An example of how the electrical system is designed for low maintenance. With fewer wiring connections than a conventional all-wire circuit, it can help reduce electrical problems. Chevy's fuse block is within easy reach under the dash. Fuses are easy to identify and replace. As soon as the ignition key is turned on, the standard flow-through power ventilation system begins to continuously circulate fresh air through the cab. Chrome dual air horns. The new 1980 Chevrolet, the latest edition of America's best-selling version of a full-size car. Nuevo Chevrolet 1980, la última edición de la versión de automóviles de tamaño grande de mayor venta en América. 
El nuevo Caprice Classic Sedan 1980, como todos los modelos Caprice e Impala, ofrece una apariencia exterior nueva de adelante a atrás, el automóvil para el mundo consciente de las necesidades de hoy día. Tiene además suficiente espacio de carga en el baúl, 21.3 pies cúbicos con un piso plano de carga. El nuevo Chevrolet viene con un techo lujoso de suave poliuretano y grueso alfombrado de una sola pieza. El nuevo motor V6 de 3.8 litros, 229 pulgadas cúbicas, estándar en todos los cupés y sedanes. En California, un V6 comparable de 3.8 litros, 231 pulgadas cúbicas, está disponible a costo extra. Y hay una selección completa de sistemas sonoros GM Delco, incluyendo este estéreo AMFM con receptor transmisor de BC. Y muchas, muchas más. El Chevrolet Caprice Impala 1980, una nueva norma de comparación de comodidad completa, amplitud, manejo y silencio. Permítanos ahora darle un paseo de demostración.